Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Yes, we're going to be discussing and reviewing The Real Housewives of Atlanta that aired today, Sunday, April 21st, 2019, Reunion Part 3, Season 11, Episode 23. Okay, 1 and 2 Reunion for this season was boring, totally boring, so we ain't going to talk about. I don't even know if I did a review for the first one or second. It doesn't matter. Don't do it. Okay, let's get right on into it. Only thing I can say was Portia was the peacemaker, y'all. It used to be Cynthia, but Portia on the good foot, <laughs> she was the peacemaker, and I enjoyed her essence. I enjoyed her this season. It was just so uplifted. I don't know, maybe babies or newborn babies or developing babies within the womb just gives you a different perspective and make you more likable to that particular person, which I never really had anything wrong with Portia. It's just Portia's educational level, how she presented herself was just like a little dim light, but now it's glowing and it's growth, and I like that. I'm glad she's showing herself less uh as a you know dumb Barbie doll, blind dumb Barbie doll, you know, stereotypical type of thing we think when we think of airheads. She's definitely graduated and I am so glad that she's being portrayed in a different way, a different light, a more positive, bright, in intellectual type way. She's learned a lot. So kudos for Portia and congratulations on her new spinoff show, Portia's Having a Baby. I think that's what it was called. So I'm definitely going to be reviewing that because, like I said, it's going to be juicy because when you get in-laws involved or potential, or I should say, um, she's just a fiancé right now, which I know is going to happen. Uh, because she, uh, she really does love the guy, but the mother-in-law of, or the mother of her fiance is gonna be something like, uh, Todd and his mama's situation going against Mama Joyce and Candy. <laughs> so that's gonna be interesting, and I'm gonna be right there. So we'll not be right there looking at that one. But let's get right on into it. We have a scene where Candy and Portia are bonding on talking. Uh, about you know getting their act together with Nene and Candy's kind of been a little shady, you know, saying you know, well I wasn't trying to make you feel like you were out. I just felt I needed to go on and needed to go on and clarify things. And Portia was like, no, nah, baby, we bonded. We I thought we were thick as thieves on this situation that we both were gonna talk to Nene. So you know, Candy came somewhat came around and understood what she was talking. And understood that it was a little shady because y'all said y'all want to talk to her together. That's what y'all needed to do. Or just, you know, drive on over there together and say, look, woman, come on out here so we can talk or go to lunch. Because we ain't really mean to do all this, that, and third. And, you know, we just want to make sure the air was clean and things of that nature. So, um, they kind of cleared the air with that situation. Then we had the situation or the scenario coming up about Nene putting her hands on the producer and staff and someone on the staff going to the hospital because they had all these marks on them and scratches and stuff. I said, Nene went ham behind closed doors. Oh my goodness. She put hands on folks. But really, I guess you could say she put hands on people's clothing <laughs> and ripped it up. Okay. And then some things had come out, you know, that they didn't really give us privy to, um, other than we're physically oh, excuse me, uh, seeing Nene attack or, or forcefully grab a hold of one of the uh, cameraman's shirt. And, of course, you know, if you pull on a T-shirt, I don't care if it's made of good quality or not. If you got some force behind that pool, it's going to look like a little rag doll that you're trying to, you know, destroy. Or, you know, a dog get a piece of your clothing and they just going wild with it. You know what I'm saying? So that's how what we were seeing on the uh, visuals they was giving us of that particular scene. But then you know, Cam was on her little dick, saying, "By now, nah, honey, you were being too aggressive." Because I was like taking out my mic. I'm like, I gotta go. I gotta get out of here. Me and Portia, we went on downstairs and trying to leave, and you came running down the stairs. You know, like you gonna do something. I'm like, Cam, stop. 
stop now. We don't want to be putting hands on nobody, especially in filming where you can take it to court and you be looking like a fool and everybody be locked up in jail, okay? Or taking community service classes and going doing community service, okay? Or I should say, uh, anger management classes. And we know already know Portion been to a couple herself. So we put that in the past. But it seemed like everybody was jumping on Nene about putting her hands on people. And maybe she needed to go to agriculture management classes. You know, they were pretty much like how they were trying to do portion on several seasons uh, back. She can't put her hands on stuff. Like da, 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 da. They were trying to, well, Portia was trying to educate them back again. Since it was strong to her, they need to throw it at Nene because Nene was getting a little bit too forceful. And, you know, I wouldn't, well, it could have been belligerent or the uses of words, but, you know, we didn't really see all that. But, you know, I felt like if Nene would have stuck to her guns and be like, look, I'm telling y'all, don't go in my closet. Don't laugh about it. Don't, you know, be in like a, a happy mood, a happy place about it. When you don't want somebody to do something, just, you know, take all of the uh, positive out of it and go for the negative. Look, y'all at my house. I don't want y'all to go back there. I'll, you're going to have to see it another time or just see it after the cameraman leave or whatever, you know. Excuse me, but put it out there, period and point blank, that you know this person is serious. Don't go in their closet. They don't told you what you can do off camera, but you ain't finna do it on camera, okay? Or better yet, if they say it, you know, uh, clarifying it, that they don't want you to go in their closet, period, on camera or off camera, that you know you need to uh, definitely uh, concede to it. And and just it's just get what it is. Yeah, Nene went in y'all closet and did what y'all had to do with y'all letter. Okay? But didn't think Nene was going to return a favor by letting y'all do it. You know, that's a different opinion. That's a horse of a different color. And that's Nene's house. So, I agree with Nene when she was saying, you know, uh, I told y'all not to go in my house. But I could see them, you know, looking at the other side. She was laughing and carrying on about it. You know, even though Marlo... Uh, what's going on, like, go and try her clothes, this, that, and the third, <laughs> you know, doing what she do best and doing what she supposed to do to stay on the show, start drama, okay, but I like, she classed with her drama now, she classed with bringing her drama, so, uh, you know, they wanted to go back and forth with it, but evidently, I'm not saying it's true or not, but just thinking on my way of wavelength of thinking, maybe she paid some people off, you know what I'm saying? Like, paid the uh, producer's medical bill or bought him several shirts or just said, you know, he could come to her shop and get everything free for a year, you know, don't press no charges. That's just my way of thinking, maybe what she did to smooth things up. I think they took an episode from her where she didn't get paid because of the incident, but, you know, it is what it is. All right, got to keep our thoughts sometimes to ourselves and don't give it all for drama for the show because it might land you in jail somewhere or looking at a uh, lawsuit of some sort. Okay, now we can leave that situation, go to Porsche. Porsche talking about Nene, uh, with well, Porsche and Candace still talking about Nene being just too aggressive. And I'm like, you know, if you stay out of her closet, you wouldn't have that sense of aggression coming towards you for the negative. So both of y'all were wrong. Any person you, Porsche, you knew. Uh, because you're saying you were trying to protect your space toward the end of the reunion. That's why you didn't come to a lot of Candace events that she had on the show. Because you were pregnant, you were positive, you were just feeling yourself and all the beautiful, beautiful, ugh, beautifulness of being pregnant. And you were just wanting that energy to continue. And, you know, if you put yourself in certain negativity, negativity in certain negative situations, PJ, in your eyes, you felt would have been bad for her because she would have been feeling all your drama your, for the negative, and you didn't want that to be in your space. You wanted people to cater to you. You want to, you know, boss everybody around. It's what you do. You do it while I'm pregnant. I, you know, you, you my bestie for life, but, you know, I just need all the attention on me, and that's understandable. You know, guard your space. So, hopefully, you know, she says she'll be back In rotation of uh, visiting and, and um, what do you call it, uh, representing for the uh, friendship when they're filming. And maybe off camera, too. She'll come to some socials or whatnot. Okay, then we go to a situation where 
Well, first of all, I want to say congratulations to Noelle. She's supposed to be studying at Howard University in Washington. Uh, and from what it seems like, from what Cynthia and Leon and or were talking about, she wasn't making a good transition. And when Andy asked her how she was doing, she was like, they had to redo the first semester. So I'm like, well, she went up there and flunked. Okay, maybe y'all shouldn't have pushed her, you know. Just because you got the money to send her away to college. Maybe she should have stayed here and went to college. We got a lot of nice colleges in Atlanta. Agnes Scott College. You got Clark Atlanta. You got Spelman. Hell, you got Georgia State. You got Georgia Tech. You know, she didn't necessarily have to go out of town to experience being in college life. Because she could have stayed on campus. Or hell, you could have gave her her own apartment. And, you know, she still would have been around the familiar area, this, that, and the third. But I don't think Noelle is on that level of um, being oh, too far away from friends and family. So that's what y'all should have did. She didn't have to leave the state of Georgia to go improve herself and educate herself. She could have did that when she take a vacation, okay, or traveling the world, just seeing the world. Maybe that's what she should have did before y'all dropped her in school or insisted that she go in school. But that's my opinion. I'm not sitting at your table breaking bread with you and trying to understand the situation. I'm just reviewing my opinion and seeing what I'm giving on TV to, you know, make my response to. Not that y'all need it or anything, but some people might want to understand where I'm coming from when I'm reviewing shows, and maybe they feel like we're like-minded. We're kinder spirits, you know, but sometimes you got to let your kids, uh, especially when they just graduate from high school, some of them may need two years off. Just get a job and maybe travel the world or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And then decide when college fits in, because that's a definitely uh, a bill. You're going to be Hey, hush, Elijah. A bill you definitely gonna have for a long time, and you may or may not pay it all back. You know, just depends on what your degree is and uh, you know how well you do with finding a job and networking. And uh, just all that kind of stuff going on. So that was quite interesting. But congrats to her trying to do that. Uh, upper level thing, post-secondary education, and hopefully it works out for her, but she has to do it on her terms, because she's going to have money. I'm sure Cynthia got some money saved back for her, as well as Leon. Let her try to live her life and develop her life on how she feels, because it is her life, you know. She's just a gift from the Lord. Y'all take care of her uh, emotionally, but she has to find her own self. So moving on from that, we go to Mike and Cynthia relationship you know he asking her to marry him and marry him and marry him and all this thing i'll be leery if i was you cynthia you know it is something to the degree where it could go both ways it's 50 50 if you look at it you know you can wait a lifetime and not get married like oprah but you still have a relationship and a companionship or you get married and there be a, a, a situation where it may or may not turn out the way uh, you did with Peter. How y'all got married and he basically did some things and maybe you did some things and it just didn't work out. Not saying that it won't work out with you and Mike. I don't know. It's just kind of sketchy. You know, uh, 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 is this the right fit? I don't know. To me, I think you need to wait a little longer. See how his uh, expenses is running and his business dealings are running. Because, you know, with your position you have on Real Housewives of Atlanta, we'll afford him many more opportunities to be seen, to be heard. Because I didn't know who Mike Hill was until you introduced him to the show. But then I'm not a sports fanatic either. So, uh, it just is what it is. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do, Cynthia. You're 52, 51 years old. Do you, baby. Do you. Um, then, you know, had the situation where she was talking about whoever she with, you know, Leon definitely comes with a package because um, he's her father, this, that, and the third, and he gets to make decisions. I like Cynthia, come on now. Okay, uh, Leon is not really a threat or anything. We already know that if you and him got together, y'all married, he would be considered a stepfather, you know, and he, she already has a dad. Uh, so, he would just be an extra added addition, you know what I'm saying? But his relationship should not affect your relationship where you want to marry. I mean, because hopefully you're not married with somebody that has broken the law, have felonies, and, you know, had done 
terrible things to children, you know what I'm saying? So, enough of that being said. Um, moving on from there, we go down a trip down to Evil's Lane. We're talking about her life, her past life, her current life, her married life, the drama with her finances, you know, Marlo jumping in, uh, throwing jabs here and there, pretty much TKO her. <laughs> we were just talking about them fighting in the ring. So, that was hilarious to say the the least, and then Candy gonna come out the woodwork, jumping on Marlo's side, saying, you know, hey, we ain't hear just from one source, it was several sources, and, you know, uh, and even looking at Candy, like, oh, you trade, you trading up on teams too now, oh, you going on Marlo team, Marlo and team Nene, oh, God, I see what you're doing, let me know what she gave me when I was looking at her expression, because Candy was coming out, you know, left and right, you know, not at the best scenes and the best times to be saying anything, but I guess she needed and wanted to say something, since most of the third reunion part was being uh, played in the favor of Eva, and Eva saying what she had to say, and then Nene, then Marlo, and then Cynthia, so technically, I don't even know why we had Tanya there, I don't even know if she have a peach at this time. Hopefully she don't. Maybe she's still a friend of the a family or some or friends of the friend because she don't need one. She's not really. She just a she a messy. She like a charade. You know what I'm saying? Nothing else symbolic about it. Nothing else significant with her. It's just she's a fixture there, and I just don't. I don't know. I just don't. I don't like her. You know, she's not bringing me anything. You know, it's like when she opened up her mouth, she just wanted to be seen and heard and drop tea, but she don't do it respectfully. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I'm just, I'm up in the air with her right now. She's not here. She's not there. You know, she's just somewhere out there. Okay. Um, and then you have uh, Shamari was really, nobody really said anything to her this part. And I was like, okay, well, I'd rather really hear from Shamari than Tanya any day. So, I, I ain't know. But, uh, so I'm, I'm not team Tanya right now. So, uh, but like I said, those was players and Candy was just trying to jump in here and there. And pretty much instead of just sitting over there looking pretty and if somebody had to say something, then say something, you know. But it just is what it is, okay? Hi, Elijah. Come here. Come here. Um, then we get to the point where Cynthia and Nene fall out about Kenya and you know things can't get straightened out and and, and what you call just looking at them like what? <laughs> so that was funny as shit. Okay. Oh my lord, Cynthia just can't dig herself out the nine feet, ten feet, sixteen feet gray she done put herself in. And it just kept looking worse as it went on and, and it was drilling her and this and the third. I was like, Cynthia, give it up. Just say you ashamed, you ashamed, you apologize, you apologize, and keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Cause was paying everybody dust. <laughs> she was paying everybody dust like she does on all the seasons she's on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. You would think people would understand. Okay. Woo. But anyway, like I always said, if Nita ain't there to be in some kind of drama and bring her side at Marlo, what would the Real Housewives of uh, Real Housewives would let her be. <laughs> it just wouldn't be. I'm sorry. You could try to take Nene out the equation and think you're going to have something, but it's, it's just not the same. And then with Marlo being there, it's like, okay, I've gotten my true cup of tea because she's going to give it to you whether you like it or whether you don't. It's just self sitting on the table waiting for somebody else to respond on what she said. So I was there for it. I was there for it. Okay, but it, I don't know if it's. I personally I think it's just a, a a publicity stunt to keep the show going. You know, I did a video um in the past. You can check it out. I'm sure it's on my uh in my archives or whatnot. Uh, about Cynthia is possibly leaving the show along with um Eva. So we're still seeing if that's going to transpire. But to tell you the truth. Cynthia's ready to jump on a new leaf of life. She's ready to move to L.A. She's probably still keep her home here because, you know, we never know what may work and what may not work out. So she needs to keep that in her thoughts. Uh, but prayers go out to her. She really wants to definitely get up with this man and be Mrs. Hill. I, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But it just is what it is. But um, uh, I just think if she do get off the show, that's the reason why. And then I don't even know if we have an L.A. show. 
of Bravo. She might expand up to, you know, being a part of that team instead of Atlanta. Go, you know, both ways. I don't know which will, however it goes. But she wants to marry um, Mike. And Mike said he'll marry her. I'm sure she'll jump to Broome, okay? Uh, then we go to Porsche trying to make a point on the whole incident about Kenya being asked to come. And she knew she would come and meet Cynthia. And this, that, and third. And they showed some backward clips where, um, hold on. She showed some uh, backward clips where they were uh, seeing back past tapings. <laughs> and Cynthia was uh, whispering in my ear, she's not supposed to know that Kay is coming and all this stuff. And I'm like, who gives a crap? Cynthia, you should have just told Nanny up front since you know that's her arch nemesis. She don't like her for whatever reason it is. Maybe because she thought Kay was going to steal her thunder and become the queen of the show. I don't know. But just in good taste, and you had all this advice given when it came to, you know, uh, Nene having a party, and, and she was inviting Yovana, and, you know, Eve was going to be there. She said, you know, you need to throw her heads up, this, that, and the third, giving all this one of her advice. But Cynthia didn't take her own advice when it came to her throwing her own event and inviting Nene and Kenya, because she did invite Kenya. Uh, and that was up to her to decide whether she was going to come or not. Whether she's going to be on film and not get paid for it, you know, this, that, and third, because Kenya was still trying to be in the uh, contract negotiations about coming back to the show and being paid. If she didn't get paid, she didn't want to be a part of the filming. So they, you know, you know, when you, you go to these events where you have a real Housewives of Atlanta taping their scenes, you're going to be involved too, but you ain't going to get paid. So uh, Kenya wants that dollar. So it ain't happening for her right now. And it's is what it is, okay? Still do you, can you still do you all day every day. But uh <laughs> they were just you know going back, showing how needy was shady, can you and can you ingestly not uh paying any dust. Well she was paying any dust. She wasn't trying to uh be a part of Nene. She didn't care to look at Nene. She just was making like Nene was totally invisible and the show was about her. <laughs> Or that scene where she went to uh, Cynthia's event when she was coming out with her new signature drink with uh, Sigrum's Cools, which I'm a very advocate drinker of Sigrum's Cools when it comes to the Bahama Mama and a strawberry daiquiri. But I have yet to see Cynthia's uh, Bellini drink uh, in my store area in Atlanta. Uh, as of yet, I still haven't seen it because I wanted to taste it and see what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Try to support them, in other words. But uh, it is what it is. Whenever I get a chance to, I review it and let you know how things going. And I want to tell y'all, y'all, I was out shopping today. I'm not today, but yesterday, uh, day before, uh, well, Saturday, day before Easter. And um, we was riding somewhere on Camelton, in, in Camelton, Georgia, or uh, out in the Jonesboro, not Jonesboro, but Greenbrier area, and ran into the OLG. Uh, restaurant that they had just opened up that they had filmed on the show. It looked nice on the outside. And I'm like, Kennedy, start acting. She, she get, that's a plaza. So you have to be leasing. I'm thinking, uh, this is my train of thought. Correct me if I'm wrong. She has, uh, that's why she's able to not really see herself losing money. And, uh, you know, in other words, you know, where other people go and actually buy uh their own building their own land and they build their um uh, place of employment where they want to construct business at or do business at you know them closing down because you know um they have their own setup and they're responsible for everything but basically when you're in a plaza like that you lease in space you know what i'm saying and the person that actually owns that uh complex that you're shopping in they make all the rules and regulations so that's a win, win, sweet deal for Candy because she's not actually owning it all on her own. Uh, she's leasing space and providing it uh, in very lucrative locations because it, I plan on going there uh, real soon, maybe this summer, since it's so convenient to me and I don't have to go downtown because it ain't no space downtown. Parking is terrible, all of that. But at least this is in like a shopping strip mall place. The OLG, she opened up on Cavalton Road. Um, and it's more accessible with parking space. So, 
I will go do my own review. Hopefully, she got some chicken wings in them. You know, like an appetizer dish. Because I'm not really into soul food. Because my family gets down with that. And I'm kind of overwhelmed with all that. I just want something quick. Something easy. You know, somewhere you can go and just chill for a minute. Before you catch a movie. You, you know, or somewhere you can go after you've been shopping. And you just want to, like, downgrade your... um. Um, demeanor or mannerism we're gonna have some reflection time before we have to get back out there and hustle and bust and deal with all these folks in the street so we'll look and see how that comes out uh, I'm looking forward to going there but anyway just to, have to drop that little tea on y'all but we'll go back to the show we had uh, Porsche trying to make a point <laughs> Porsche trying to tell you the peacemaker trying to make a point she just trying to say look you and Nene, Nene her, Cynthia and her they don't need to be not being friends. They, you know, they understand. They apologize for one another. Just get what it is. Because Cynthia is just tripping off what Nene giving her, which is negative energy. So she trying to say she don't like Nene. Did I, you remember the friendship contract way back in the earlier seasons and all that crap? Nene still got her strings, still pulls Cynthia's strings. Because uh, Cynthia is her puppet, okay? And she the puppet master. Oh, so... That's basically how I see that whole friendship. You ain't gonna never concede where it's always gonna be an even playing field when it comes to those two. Nene's on top, Cynthia's on bottom, and this is how it's gonna roll. <laughs> really, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Nene does not see um, Cynthia as her equal, okay? So then the last and final thing I wanted to talk about, uh, <laughs> Nene is fronting on Candy real bad. She telling Candy, you are not important. <laughs> Not even important in this particular case. We're talking about some butt out. And she was trying to tell her nicely or not as nicely as Nina could come with it. But that was fun. That was funny. That was fun. She kept tearing down Candy saying, no, honey, uh, you're not important. <laughs> you're not even in this situation. So your opinion don't count. I'm not listening to it. Hush, okay? Hush, you make a fool out yourself, so stop talking because it ain't got nothing to do with you. This is something between me and Cynthia and us having our little things. Even though you may have played your part and being shady and trying to get Kenya to come and this, that, and third. But I, I, I ain't got no beef with you right now, but you finna start some beef now. And I'm going to finish it for you, Ken. So I'm telling you, back off. Sit down somewhere. Hush, this not your fight. Don't get into it because I might strike you. I might have to strike at you next, okay? And I ain't talking about with her hands. I'm just talking about with her verbal mouth. Okay? So, it just is what it is. But, yes, I love this particular episode. It was full of laughter, short banter, uh, intellectual type conversation was being had. And it kind of showed Portia in a very, very different light. I love my sister Portia now. <laughs> she the peacemaker. Lord, they don't put Portia as the peacemaker. I took Cynthia's crown on that job. So I really wish Cynthia well. I really do. And Tanya, you know, I'm going to talk about her. And Eva, you know, I, I, you know, like people had said, Kim Fields wasn't a good fit, which I thought she was. You know, she just had a low temperament and very calm when she addressed things. But I'm like, I, I don't see Eva being, she don't need a piece, not really. I guess they thought she would bring something to the show, but she really did. And if she's broke, like uh, Marlo trying to say she is, you know, hey, just join the uh, society of uh, people that live paycheck to paycheck. You know what I'm saying? Because Andy was trying to be shady, trying to say, how did you make all this money to pay off your wedding? And, you know, a couple of jobs you said you would do it. And then be more believe that mess, but that's Andy's job as a uh, a commentator and an interviewer to ask the hard questions, <laughs> the tough questions. And hopefully you can, you know, stand on your feet and answer them real well. But if not, you're gonna look like a fool. And that's what I'm at. that's what Andy's there for to bring the drama, to bring the confusion, the chaos. So I was here for it. I was here for it. Okay, for Portia, she came out smelling like a rose. I'm like, go ahead, Portia. Go ahead, girl. You can improve. You you showed that in these past episodes to the current one that's now over with and done with. And looking forward to seeing you on uh what is it, season twelve? Uh yeah. If they have one, which I'm pretty sure they would have one, probably minus a few people. But hopefully they can get some more people, some new people, you know. Go on over there to uh Monica. 
because her and her husband look like they're having a little bad time. That's some drama right there. But, uh, can't get tired because T.I. ain't going to, he ain't, ain't going to be for that. <laughs> It'll be the whole thing about, why you let T.I. do you like this? Why you let T.I. do you like that? You know, why he can't be faithful? <laughs> Try to be don't cuss all of them out on that show. Woo! But let's just see what it is, y'all. Y'all be blessed, and I'll see you on my next video, whenever that may be. Blessings. Good night.